Krishna Kirtana Gana Nartana Paro Premamritambo Nidhi Dikna Kirtana Arna Nartana Paro Premamritambo Nidhi Dira Dira Jana Priya Priya Kara Nirmat Sara Pujita Radira Jana Priya Priya Kara Nirmat Sara Pujita Sri Chaitanya Kripa Bhara Bhuvi Bhuva Bharava Hantarakha Sri Chaitanya Kripa Bhara Bhuvi Bhuva Bharava Hantarakha Vande Rupa Sanatana Raghu Yaga Sri Jeeva Go Halaka Vande Rupa Sanatana Raghu Yaga Sri Jeeva Go Halaka So, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we will be commemorating his appearance day in a few weeks. And Krishna appeared 5,000 years ago, but then again he appeared 500 years ago in his Chana avatar, or a concealed, hidden incarnation. In your temple, I, I noticed today that your Gornitai deities are the sweetest I have seen. I really got entranced today looking at Sri Sri Gornitai. So Krishna appeared as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He inaugurated this Krishna consciousness movement. Our founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, came to spread his movement. Lord Chaitanya predicted that the name of Krishna would be heard in every town and village of the world. And one of the many accomplishments of Srila Prabhupada was to actually fulfill that mission by his ISKCON movement. We now have, how many temples we have? 600 temples worldwide. And it started in one temple in New York City, 26 Second Avenue. And I think two devotees here were in that temple. Madhusudan, you and your wife, you were there at the beginning. So we cannot offer you enough praise for helping Srila Prabhupada in the very beginning, you have memories that far surpass millions. So, Lord Chaitanya, he has six specific disciples, which this song I am singing is glorification of those six Goswamis of Vrindavan. Today, is the disappearance of one of the two main ones, Srila Rupa Goswami. Our movement in particular, Srila Prabhupada's movement, we are very keen on following the teachings of Rupa Goswami, as Prabhupada mentions in his Nectar of Devotion. So we are called Rupa Anugas, or Rupa Anuga, follower of the teachings of Rupa Goswami. 
But when you follow Rupa Goswami, all you're doing is following Lord Chaitanya. Because whatever Rupa Goswami wrote was only because Lord Chaitanya instructed him and inspired him to do so. If you read carefully the one chapter in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, you can see Lord Chaitanya instructing Rupa Goswami and the basis of those instructions is where we get this Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu or Nectar of Devotion. So, uh, my sponsor today, so nicely he introduced me, actually embarrassing. Um, so I asked him, I said, since you're my sponsor, you get to request what I talk about. And so he said, well, it's Rupa Goswami's disappearance day. So then I was thinking, okay. And then I got a text message from Krishna in the heart. And he said, uh, this would be the best thing. Because when you do a Sunday feast lecture, you have to be able to speak on different levels. Some of you are very, very advanced in knowledge. Some of you are just beginning. Some of you are in between. So my job is satisfy everybody. I'll try to do that. Usually before I speak, I chant the mantra uh, from the Shikshashtakam, Lord Chaitanya's eight teachings. Trinadapi sunichena torar eva sehishnuna amanina manadena kirtaniya sadahari. If I want to speak and sing about Krishna, there's a checklist of four things. First one, humility, humility, humility. How humble? Don't worry about it. You cannot be too humble. Uh, the next one, tolerance. Anyone who has children, you know what it means to be tolerant. From the moment of conception until you die. That's all you're doing. Tolerate, tolerate, tolerate. The husband is tolerating the wife, the wife is tolerating the husband. And both of them are tolerating the children. Then you go to work, you got to tolerate the boss and your co-workers. Right? This world, that's all we're doing. Tolerating one inconvenience after another. Lord Chaitanya said, be more tolerant than the tree. Then the next thing, offer all respects to others. Why? Because everyone is the resting place of Krishna. Krishna is in everyone's heart, even Donald Trump. I know how, how that can be, how that can be, but he's there. Where? I don't know. So Krishna says, my wife hates it when I do that, but I tell her, I got to do it. So everyone is worshipable because everyone is the resting place of Krishna. And then the next one, the last one is the hardest of all. Not to be concerned about others praising or what others are thinking about myself, ourselves. That's not our concern. So if we can do those four things, then it is written in Chaitanya Charitamrita. If you can do these four things, then you can always easily, so two things, always and easily chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So why is that? Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama Iva Kivalam, Kalo Nastyeva Nastyeva, Nastyeva Gatiranyata. The religion that I joined is called chanting Hare Krishna. I did not join any other religion. Those of you want to know what is this movement? 
the movement of chanting Hare Krishna. That's, that's where, if you're in the wrong place, well, now you know. But in this movement, what is the religion? Chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. So, we won't do all eight verses. We'll just do a few because I like to keep strict time. So the first verse, first of all, who are these six Goswamis? Rupa Goswami, his elder brother Sanatan Goswami, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, Jiva Goswami, and Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So the first verse, they're always engaged in chanting the holy name of Krishna. If they're actual followers of Lord Chaitanya, then they must be always chanting because Lord Chaitanya himself was always chanting. The verse in the Bhagavatam, Krishna Varnam, he's always either talking about Krishna, he's either chanting about Krishna or describing Krishna. One of my favorite quotes of Srila Prabhupada in 1969, the famous Beatle, John Lennon, he asked Prabhupada, how do I know who's the real guru? Because at that time, we had this guru, that guru, guru, guru on the wall, who's the best of all? <laughs> so John Lennon, he wanted to know from Prabhupada, how do I know who's the real guru? Because he already had a bad experience <laughs> with some other guru. So Prabhupada, Prabhupada was so in tune with Krishna. What did Prabhupada say? Find that guru who is most addicted to Krishna. Now, that, that, I don't know if you know, but at that time, John Lennon was addicted to two things, his wife and drugs. I'm not making this up, that's a fact. So Prabhupada's using that word addicted to Krishna is just brilliant, brilliant, addicted to Krishna. I wish I could be addicted to Krishna. That's my desire, to be always in that state where I'm either talking or singing. I want to come to the stage that even in my sleep, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, that's my goal. I want to become addicted to Krishna. Will you bless me? Will you give me that? Then come on, bless me. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Now not only were these six Goswamis chanting, but if you are actually chanting, the symptom will be naturally you want to dance. In the spiritual world, there is a description in the Brahma Sanghita that in the spiritual world, they don't walk, they dance. They don't talk, they sing. That's when you know you're a resident of the spiritual world. When you're always dancing and singing. Next description. They are just like the ocean of love of God. So Lord Chaitanya is the one who used this nice description. The ocean of love of God. We all know not very far is the Pacific Ocean. Right? We know how big the ocean is. So Lord Chaitanya told the six Goswamis that even one drop of the ocean of love of God can flood the whole universe. One drop. That's how powerful love of God is. And these six Goswamis, they're just like the ocean of love of God. There's another description. Those of you who are familiar with Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Indian people, you know from the Mahabharat. I'll mention the word Vidura. Those of you know who's Vidura. 
So in the Mahabharata, there's so much. So Vidura, just before the battle of Kurukshetra, was kicked out by Duryodhan. He was kicked out from his brother's palace. So Vidura said, okay, fine. Vidura went on pilgrimage throughout India. So after the battle of Kurukshetra, when he returned, Yudhishthir is now the king of the world, Delhi, Astinapur. So when Yudhishthir sees Vidura, he goes, Oh, Vidura, you are such a devotee that you yourself are a walking place of pilgrimage because you are carrying Krishna's presence wherever you go. Same idea. These six Goswamis, because of their high degree of intense Krishna consciousness, wherever they go, everyone becomes influenced. Those of us who were fortunate when we were in a Prabhupada's association, same thing. When you sat with Prabhupada, when you saw him, when you heard him, you got a glimpse of what is this ocean of love of God. When you heard Prabhupada's kirtan, you probably were in many such Prabhupada kirtans. Am I right? Prabhupada's kirtan was beyond this nectarian. I can only listen to his recordings, which I do. I like every day to listen as much as I can to Prabhupada's bhajans and kirtans. So this ocean of love of God and these six Goswamis and we just need a drop of love of God. That's another reason why we chant this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. We just want a drop of the nectar. That's all we need. Here when we're Southern California, when we're thirsty, one drop won't do. You need more than a drop. But when you have love of God, just one drop of love of God can drown and flood your heart. Now this next was very nice, this next description. These Goswamis, they're popular both with the gentle and the ruffians. In other words, they were so ideal, even the bad people wouldn't mess with them. They respected them. So that's amazing. I'll tell you a story that I heard from a sannyasi god brother. There's a place in South America, Colombia, and it's known for its peculiar crime rate. So we have Hare Krishna devotees in Colombia. So in Colombia there's lots of gang wars different drug cartels they're fighting. So the devotees, they're chanting on the street. A car stops. Out come the guns, but they tell the devotees, move aside. Because they were in front of some rival building, but they didn't want to shoot the devotees. So they said, just move. <laughs> okay, go back on with your chanting. So, the, the Cisco Swamis were like that. People in general, they would come, and if there was some village quarrel, they would go to the Goswamis, you settle. Because they knew they're pure in heart. They'll judge nicely without any prejudice. So, with the gentle and the ruffians, both they were respected. And it, it says, why? Because they're not envious. Near Matsuro was used in the song. Near Matsuro. Even in Srimad Bhagavatam, the second verse of Bhagavatam says that if you want to understand Srimad Bhagavatam, qualification, free yourself from envy. That's the key to understanding Srimad Bhagavatam. Even Krishna tells Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita. Because you're never envious of me, that's why I'm speaking to you Bhagavad Gita. 
So we are taught, become free from envy. So that's one reason why we don't eat meat, fish, eggs. Because we're not envious of other living entities. There are other reasons. But we're not envious of God. We're not envious of other people. We're not envious even of the ant. Again, why? Everyone is the resting place of Krishna. To become free from envy, that's a great jewel. That's a real quality. Now they says, whatever these Goswamis do, they are pleasing to everyone. And they are fully blessed by Lord Chaitanya. Now the last line. Thus they are engaged in missionary activities meant to deliver all the conditioned souls in the material universe. That is the purpose of Prabhupada's ISKCON movement. This question is asked many times. Why there should be an ISKCON? Why did Prabhupada create an international society? This is why. We are meant to be missionaries. But what kind of missionaries? We are meant to deliver all the fallen conditioned souls. In Prabhupada's movement, there's no discrimination. The doors are open for everyone. Regardless of who you are or what you were, doesn't matter. Everyone is invited to come, chant, dance, and the best thing, take prasad. Which is why I joined. <laughs> That's the movement I joined. I joined the chanting, dancing, and feasting movement. Sign me up. I am a lifetime member, right? Yes. So we are meant to do, and Prabhupada even wrote about this. Everybody likes nice humanitarian welfare activities. Whenever there's some crisis, the appeals go out to donate. But Prabhupada said all these other welfare groups, benefit groups, yes, it's a temporary thing. But those missionaries of ISKCON, they are doing the topmost welfare work because we are feeding and nourishing the eternal soul, not just someone's material body or needs. When someone gets one of our books, that is going to their eternal benefit. When someone comes in contact with a devotee, that is going for their eternal benefit. When we, like how many people last week went to the Los Angeles Vrata Yatra? So hundreds and hundreds of people saw Jagannath, saw the devotees, saw so many exhibits, and they took prasad. I think your temple was in charge of the prasad distribution. Badri, how many people came for the pr prasad? Now that depends on what level you count. Plates. Eighteen to 19,000 plates. Hello. And it's not, not it, we're not just giving them food, we're giving them prasadam, sanctified food, that again benefits them eternally. So what, what Prabhupada's movement is, is a great blessing on human society. And these six Goswamis, they were the Originators, we're following in their footsteps. Nana Shastra Vicharonai Pnipano Sat Dharma Sang Stapaka
ลกานางฮิตะคาริงาจีบูบานมานโยชรัญญาคารุอาดาคริชนาพดาลวินดาบุญนานันดีนาวัตถาลิกาบันเดวุปัสนาตนาร a ก a ยากาสรีจีบาโกฮาลกา I did that for Budri. I know. I as soon as you walked in, I said, Ah. I gotta make sure I do the bell. You know, Budgie. Ever since you authorized back some years ago, I've mentioned it publicly all over the world. That, by the way, folks, this bell is GBC authorized. <laughs> yes. So in this second verse, it says that the six Goswamis, they're very expert. And scrutinizingly studying all the revealed scriptures, Lord Chaitanya gave these Goswamis several direct instructions. This is one of them. He told the Goswamis, "Go and excavate and discover all the lost places of Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan." So when you go to Vrindavan now. And you go to this god, and you go to this place. That's the work of these six Goswamis. They went, they found old manuscripts, old maps, and they uncovered all these holy places in Vrindavan. Just as Lord Chaitanya himself discovered Radha Kund, the most sacred place in the whole universe. But these six Goswamis. So that was one. Instruction. Another instruction is this one. Lord Chaitanya gave them the blueprint, gave them the essential teachings, but he wanted the six Goswamis. Now you go study all the Vedas, Puranas, Itihasas, all the Vedic scriptures, and find all the evidence for all the things I have instructed you. So that's exactly what they did, and that word "scrutinizingly" means they like sometimes you read something like on your phone, right? You you just glance over, you see the headline. Oh, Trump said this. Did did did. <laughs> But when you study something scrutinizingly, like anybody here, an accountant. We have any accountants here? So if you have an accountant, he better scrutinizingly know the tax code. That's what you want, or if you are a lawyer, you want the lawyer to scrutinizingly study the law in case you need, for your particular circumstance, in a lawsuit or whatever. So these six Goswamis, very systematically, very carefully, went through all the Vedic literatures. Just to give the and you see, in the nectar of devotion, there'll be a heading, there'll be a statement, and then reference one gives different examples to illustrate the point that he's stating. That's how the they wrote their books: statement, then evidence, and same as Lord Chaitanya in the Chaitanya Charitamrita when he's instructing Rupa and Sanatan. And Sarva Boma, he'll make a statement, but then immediately, this quote reference, this quote, boom, boom, like a lawyer. And I believe that's how Prabhupada wants us to preach. 
We should know his books like the lawyer knows the law books. But what is the purpose of them studying the scriptures so that they can show off? Oh, yes, I know all of the Sundarbas. No, not that for some personal aggrandizement. No, with the aim of establishing eternal religious principles. That is what is Sanatan Dharma. Many of you know that word, Sanatan Dharma. So this is Sanatan Dharma, eternal religious principles for all human beings. This is, again, this is why what we are doing is not sectarian. These teachings of Bhagavad Gita and the teachings of Srila Prabhupada, they're not just for a very select group. No, it's for everyone. Everyone should chant Hare Krishna. Everyone. Everyone should take prasad. Everyone. Everyone should become Krishna's devotee. Eternal religious principles for everyone. And this is our, that's why we have an international movement. We have devotees here in America, Canada, Mexico. I go to South America. And we have devotees in China. We have devotees in, uh, was it? We have devotees in Iran. Oh, yeah. We have devotees in Iran. I know we have devotees in Pakistan, right? All over. North Korea. No. Don't, tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Okay. <laughs> North. So, this is our movement. International society. As Lord Chaitanya wanted, every town and village. And because they do this, these six Goswamis are honored all over the three worlds, upper planets, middle planets, and lower planets. They are honored. And it says here that these six Goswamis, they are worthy to take shelter of. Why? They are absorbed in the mood of the gopis. What is the mood of the gopis? The mood of the gopis is actually very simple. The mood of the gopis is, we will do anything to please Krishna. That is gopi bhav. Whatever it takes to please Krishna, we're willing to do. My favorite example, Narada, I think it was Narada, someone was sent with a message. Krishna told him, I have a headache. You go to some brahmanas and you tell the brahmanas the only thing to relieve my headache will be the dust from their feet. So Narada went, oh, holy brahmanas, Lord Krishna has a headache. He says the only thing that will relieve his headache is the dust of your feet. The brahmana said, Narada, what you are saying? Are you real Narada? I think you're bogus. Because if we give Krishna the dust of our feet, that is the greatest offense. We will go to hell. Go away. No. So then Narada went to the gopis. Narada came. The gopis said, oh, Narada ji, what? what? Lord Krishna has a headache. <gasps> what? what? What can we do? We'll do... Narada said, Krishna says, the only thing that will take away his headache is the dust of your feet. Take. Take as much as you want. Take. Narada said, but you're going to go to hell. We don't care. We don't care if we go to hell. All we want is to take away Krishna's headache. You see the difference. They have love for Krishna. They'll do any, like mothers, you mothers here. You already proved it. When your child was sick, the husband was... <laughs> but you got up in the middle of the night and took care of the... Am I right, ladies? 
Huh? I know. I know. Mother cannot rest. If child is not well, mother cannot rest. That's, that's why Prabhupada said, the closest thing in the material world to understand love of God is mother's love for the child. There's no reservation. Mother will do anything for the child. So the gopis are like that. Anything to please Krishna. That is the mood of the gopis. No personal consideration. Whatever it takes to please Krishna, that we are willing to do. So these six Goswamis were in that same mood. How can we please Krishna? And they obviously, what are they engaged in? Transcendental loving service of Radha Krishna. Let's do one more. Is everything okay? Are you enjoying? Okay. Sri Gauranga Gunanu Varna Navidhau Sraddha Samrid Yan Vitu Sri Gauranga Gunanu Varna Navidhau Sraddha Samrid Yan Vitu Papo Tapa Nikunganau Tanu Vrita Govinda Gana Vrita Apo Chapa Nikrintana Tanu Vrita Govinda Gana Vrita Anandam Buddhi Vardhanayaka Nipanao Tai Valyanis Dharata Anand Tam Buddhi Vardhanaikan Nipanao Tai Valyanis Dharata Vande Rupa Sanatana Ragu Yaga Sri Jiva Go Palaka Tande Rupa Sanatana Ragu Yaga Sri Jiva Go Palaka So in this third verse, it says here, they are very much enriched in understanding Lord Chaitanya. So we have some understanding of Lord Chaitanya through Srila Prabhupada. And uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, we understand that Lord Chaitanya appeared for external reasons and personal or internal reasons. Externally, Lord Chaitanya came to start the Hare Krishna movement, to give everyone this beautiful Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Everybody chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 That tells me if I still have the audience in my grasp. So far, I think I'm okay. So Lord Chaitanya came to give everyone this Maha Mantra. He himself distributed it in South India, in Navadweep, and the six Goswamis distributed in Northern India. But Prabhupada and Iskan distributed this Hare Krishna Mantra all over outside of India. That is... Prabhupada's another one of his accolades. We're celebrating 50 years of ISKCON. And every temple is doing special programs to highlight ISKCON's achievements. And when you talk about ISKCON's achievements in the same breath, you have to talk about Srila Prabhupada. They're simultaneously one and different. So Prabhupada is the one who brought this Mahamantra and his disciples and followers 
and grand disciples, you are continuing. So that's something for you to think about. That you also have an obligation in your own way, in your own sphere of influence. Deliver this Hare Krishna mantra to anyone and everyone you come in contact with, somehow or the other. Even a little bit, Nehabhikramana Shosti, Pratyavayo Navidyate, even a little bit is so beneficial. So even if you can get one person to say, Hare Krishna, that's wonderful. That's excellent. Don't keep this jewel to yourself. And what we learn from Prabhupada's teachings, say I want to be a charitable person. So I want to be charitable, I have a hundred dollars, I give one hundred dollars to some charitable cause. All right, that's nice, but my account is less one hundred dollars. But there is a different spiritual bank account. If you give something, say 10% of your spiritual bank account to someone, at the end of the day, your account is 20. I would love to see that in the material world. That I give charity and at the end of the day, not only did I not lose, I doubled my investment. But that's not in the material world. That's only in spiritual life. So the impetus is there. Give. Give. Give anything that you have of Krishna consciousness. Just give it. Because you will benefit even more. What to speak? The person who receives it. They will be benefited. If Prabhupada didn't come and give Krishna consciousness, we would not be here tonight. There would be no Iskan San Diego. But Prabhupada in advanced age, like I'm 66, Prabhupada came to America at 69 by himself. And what was he coming here? For vacation? No. Prabhupada came here to give Krishna. That's why he came, to give Krishna. And because he gave Krishna, now we see it has blossomed. So if we all, in whatever small way, give Krishna to others, we can create, believe it or not, Vaikuntha. Yes, it's possible. But there's an attitude. Uh, let the other guy do it. That's not, no. I have to do it. Even if it's insignificant, it doesn't matter. Everyone gives something. Give to someone else the benefit of Krishna consciousness. We can change this world. Give Anything of Krishna, even if it's just, I'll tell you an example. In the years 1988 through 1993, I had an office job. So I had my own little office. I was a bookkeeper. So, so many times I had to answer the phone. So instead of saying hello, I would say, hurry about. I would say it fast, it sounded like hello, but what am I saying? Haribo. I had to somehow or other give Krishna consciousness where I was. Another incident, I was on this elevator and there were all these exchange students. So there was like six different conversations going on and they were all talking in a different language. So I was saying, okay, so what did I start doing? Out loud. Because they were talking gibberish. I think I'll chant my Sanskrit gibberish. 
If you have the, where there's a will, there's a way, my mother used to say. There are so many inventive ways you can inject Krishna consciousness, if you want. But if you're like this, oh, no, 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 I'm very private. I'm, my religion, I have to keep very... You know. No. Give. Come out of the closet. Come out and show who you are. That you are devotee of Krishna. That's all. Be proud. That Humbly proud. Right? But be humbly proud. Yes, I'm devotee of Krishna. And I want to share this wonderful, beautiful benediction of Krishna consciousness. If you have a job, any of the ladies, you have an office job, cook something, offer it to Krishna, and let it put it out there. And the big fat lawyers will come by, oh, 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 it tastes pretty good, what is this? You don't have to say anything. My wife did that for years. She works in a law office. She would make cookies, lasagna, whatever. And, you know, everybody's coming by. Well, Valerie, what do you have there? Oh, try some. They don't know. Our prashadam is our secret weapon. But you have to offer it to Krishna. That's... And another true story. One day my wife was working... So she dressed like a Western lady, you know, chaste. So one day her boss called her in. Valerie, close the door. My wife was saying, uh-oh. You know, you know, if you worked in the office, close the door. It's like, uh-oh. So the boss said, Valerie, I'm very disappointed with you. So my wife is just sitting there very, yes. I heard something today. Someone told me that you're a Hare Krishna. <laughs> My wife said, yes. He said, I hate Hare Krishnas, but I like you. Now I can't hate Hare Krishnas anymore because you're so nice. You can preach just by your nice example. He found out now he can't hate Hare Krishnas anymore because of her. So, somehow or other, give Krishna. So it says here, the six Goswamis, they understood Lord Chaitanya's external reasons, his internal reasons. You can learn about these internal reasons of Lord Chaitanya's appearance in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Of course, you all have Chaitanya Charitamrita. How many don't have Chaitanya Charitamrita? Then you have, who's in charge of books here? We have one guy who does not... We have to... Chaitanya, Prabhupada said four books is all you need. Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Nectar of Devotion. Four books, you learn them, it's scrutinizingly, you can sit here and talk. But you have to study the books. You can't pay to sit here. Prabhu, I'll pay you. Let me sit. No. You have to do your homework. You have to study. I spend several hours every day. You think it's easy? It's not so easy. But I spend several hours every day reading the books over and over again. And they're expert in narrating Lord Chaitanya's transcendental qualities. They can purify all conditioned souls from the reactions of their sinful activities by pouring upon them transcendental songs about Govinda. Everybody say that name. Govinda. Ah, Govinda. He gives pleasure to the cows, to the senses, and to the land of Vrindavan, Govinda. As such, they are very expert in increasing the limits of the ocean of transcendental bliss. There is no limit because Anandam Buddhi Vardhanam, Lord Chaitanya's.
first teaching. This ocean of devotion, the ocean of bliss, is ever increasing. Huh? Can we hardly, we wouldn't want the Pacific Ocean to be increasing, would you? We'd be first to go. No, we like the fact that the Pacific Ocean stays put. But this ocean of love of God is anandam buddhi, it's ever increasing. Ever increasing. And we want that because we want the universe to be flooded with love of Godhead. And again, it just takes a drop. Just a drop. Thus they are the saviors of living entities from the devouring mouth of liberation. Some people question this. Liberation, what do you mean? Liberation in the classic sense of merging, becoming one with God. But the devotees would rather go to hell than merge. Why? Because a devotee only wants service. If I become one with God, no more service. So it is Lord Chaitanya's essential teaching that merging? No. I'd rather go to hell because at least in hell I could do some preaching. <laughs> Prabhupada came to hell. It's called the Bowery in 1966. <laughs> I know. I used to be on the Bowery. I know. That's hell. And there are other new places now that are hell. We read about it all the time. But at least in hell, you can tell others about Krishna. The devotee doesn't care. Heaven or hell, this place, no. What is the devotee's thinking? I just need some service. And Prabhupada's spiritual master on his deathbed told his disciples, never give up your service because that is your all and all. So if you find some service, whether it be cooking for Krishna or speaking for Krishna or singing for Krishna or managing for Krishna or editing for Krishna, whatever you can do for Krishna, that's your life and soul. Never give it up. You're allowed to be very, very protective of your service. Protect your service because that is your all in all. When you have no service, you've always got this. Wait a second, my favorite line. Say hello to my little friend. You always have this service. So either we're cleaning or we're cooking or we're singing or we're painting or mat... Like Krishna says, yat karoshi yadash nasi yaj johosi dadasi yat yat tapas yasya konte yat tat kurushvad mararpanam. Whatever you do, do it for me. That's bhakti. That is the essence of bhakti. Whatever you want to do, do it for Krishna. And you have nothing else to do. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Rama, Rama. Thank you very much. I'd like just to sing one little bit. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Everybody, one more time. Hare, come on. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama.
One last time. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you for being such a good audience. If I've made any mistakes, I beg forgiveness. I thank the temple. I thank everyone. May Krishna bless you more and more. Thank you. Hare Krishna.